Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to QNAP Live broadcast from our headquarters here in New Taipei. I'm Razon and here today with us we have Norman and Hi. Shin. Yeah. Right? Hi. Okay, so to announce, as you can see in the cover here, we are releasing, we actually have released the QTS yeah. 4.4.1, but keep in mind it is the beta version. And uh, we are going to introduce, as we have introduced earlier, some of the features that are coming with the 4.4.1. And we will talk more details about what are the, some of the advantages about the, uh, with the update and what, what is the new thing that is coming here. Yes. So to move on with the presentation, say QGS 4.4.1, as I mentioned, it, is a ha it does have a solid architecture, high speed backup, and innovative hybrid storage. So to the agenda for today is, uh, before I move on actually, you say that the Linux kernel mm, has, has been upgraded yes. with the 4.14, which is a long-term support. Yes. And this also brings a lot of advantages to our QTS, right? Yes, sure. And uh, with the QTS 4.4.1, the beta version, we have these three major categories that are coming, uh, that have been updated, upgraded, and bring you better solutions to what the, in storage and backup. We have the hybrid backup swing, the 3.0 already, the iSCSI and fiber channels, the self-encrypting drive, and Qtier, which we already had some uh, other shows and we talked in details uh, about all of these. And we have the hybrid cloud, the cache mount on file level, and uh, which uh, we have the VJ broad cloud on block level, so this is about the hybrid cloud which you can have the private and the public cloud combination and also the multimedia applications with QMAGI, QMAGI core and the multimedia console. The QMAGI we will talk by the end of this uh, presentation. So first we are talking about the storage and backup with Norman and Shun. Yes. Later we will talk with uh, Ripple about the hybrid cloud, uh, the cache mount of the VJ Bow cloud and with Etron I think yeah. it will be here. We will talk about the multimedia applications as mentioned uh, now. So Linux kernel upgrade, the 4.14 long-term support, which uh, we did the QTS, uh, which is based on, right? Yes. It does enhance the security of the QTS. Yes, so the some of the fixing are in the kernel. Mm -hmm. So uh, after we upgrade to 4.14, and we enhance the security of the QTS. Okay. At the same time, and also in the four point fourteen, they have provided a, a TCP PPR. Okay. And we can use it to improve our bandwidth utilization. Mm. And uh, besides, uh, because uh, there has some of the new hardware has put the driver inside the kernel, so mm. we can support the next generation hardware platforms. Okay. So it has security speed yes. and utility yes everything all right so qts storage and backup now as mentioned that we will talk about all these four important parts of the qts 4.4.1 beta release you yes. want to continue okay sure. okay thank you yeah thank you okay so here we can see is our new launch product new version is hba3 upgraded from uh, hybrid backup 2.1 and now we rename our product to HPS3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see our new feature here, including the data reduction in HPS3 with the Polo QD2 technology. Mm -hmm. And also, we have provided internal acceleration. So, that, uh, you have mentioned that in the kernel, we have upgraded to 4.14, last support TCP PBR. And in HPS3, we utilize this feature to help to accelerate the transmission speed of our backup job. Okay. And also in the cloud synchronization, cloud backup, we have already support 22 cloud providers. And also in this version, we support a multi-version backup to the cloud. Okay. So here we can see, here's the comparison between the conventional uh, compression technology and uh, what we have done, the data duplication, QD dupe. So uh, we can compare from the compression label and scope. In the conventional, like the file compression, they com comp compress the, the content by bytes, and it only can apply to a single single file. And for the single instance, it will compress the file by file label, but, and, but it can uh, apply to the whole specific disk area. 
So it means if uh, in a uh, same disk you got the two or three files, but with the same content, only one copy will keep in your disk. So it seems the typical data compression rate is higher than the file compression, but it's not enough. So uh, we have proposed the data dedication that will compress the uh, file content by broad level and also can be cost file compression. So it got more much higher compression rate. Oh. So here you can see it's a report from Garner mm. and in this curve it's called hype hub cycle. Okay. So in the uh, horizontal line it shows the time mm -hmm. and the, the vertical is it shows the inspection of okay. the market and it's used to measure the techniques of the application is accepted by the market or not. Uh -huh. So you can see our data duplication is in the end part of the curve. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the final yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, final, the final point. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it means this technique is highly accepted by the market and as estimation by the Garner that in uh, in the future near two or five years, okay. uh, this technology will be highly accepted by the mm -hmm. common product. So in this time, HBF3 has already support the data duplication called DTube. It's for we because we are a leading company, we want to okay. give some of the innovative technology for users to mm -hmm. try. Mm -hmm. be because we, we we know that uh, data duplication is much suitable for three major scenarios, including the backup application, okay. mm -hmm. and the, the vir virtual type library, the mm -hmm. VTL, and also storage server. Mm -hmm. So it means we can utilize to to uh, let, us, let our backup job uh, to mm -hmm. run more efficiently. Okay. okay, so here you can see our QDD technology is using for the data reduction, and uh, it's the source side data duplication and what is the advantage it can bring to us, including because all of the data will be duplicated before we send it out to the backup destination. Mm -hmm. So it means you can get the bandwidth reduction. Mm -hmm. And also the storage space saving, and the most important is highly compatible with the cloud services. And then uh, here you can see we have number uh, with the VM image size here is uh, 15.48 gigabyte okay. and after duplication you can see the deduped file size is near to 8 gigabytes okay. so it's near to 50 percent of the data has mm -hmm. been removed yeah. yes so um, after the investigation we, we know that over 81 percent of enterprise has adopted the cloud solutions and what I have mentioned with the society duplication technology like the QDD is much suitable for this kind of enterprise to use because mm -hmm. it's highly compatible mm -hmm. with the cloud services. Okay. Okay. And uh, here we want to say you do a backup but how to lower down the risk mm -hmm. of your data uh, corrupted or mm -hmm. missing we suggest the user to do more backup by versions. Okay. But uh, something is the hidden risk, like because you need to big, uh, hire the backup frequency. But as you know, if you got a lot of data amount need to be backup, it take a long time to finish. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that you cannot hire the frequency to do the backup. So the key is you need to speed up the execution of the backup task by uh, removing the redundant data need to be backed up. So mm -hmm. what I said, the dupe is very useful for this kind of scenarios. Okay, makes sense. And uh, here you can see if the user want to do the multi version backup, they have some problem because uh, if they do a lot of versions, it need a lot of storage space for mm -hmm. saving that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but with our deduplication, you can see the first backup that what I told from the fifty. Uh, 15 mm -hmm. gigabyte okay. to 8 gigabyte but the second one the second uh vnver yeah. is still uh, 15 49 gigabytes and uh, after the duplication and the multi multi version backup the 
the backup uh, data in the destination only increased to 7.8 okay. gigabytes. So it's like 1.03 times? Yes. Okay. And the in this size, it's uh, for keeping the two versions. Ah, right. So you ask, uh, if you want to do a restoration, mm -hmm. you can select the two versions for restoration, mm -hmm. but it's only like the one copy size. Ah, no big difference in size. Like. Yes. And uh, in this slide, mm -hmm. we want to introduce the QDFF file format. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, after your data is uh, duplicated, we will use in the QDFF to pack it. Mm -hmm. Your data, yeah, and uh, the the full name is QNAP YouTube file format, mm -hmm. and uh, after it, this kind of the file is generated via the mm -hmm. QDFF engine, and uh, one thing you need to mention, the QDF file format should be restored before access. Okay. Okay. So you can directly to access the file after your backup because it gives you the advantage like the storage space saving. Mm, okay. So, I will help user to deal with this kind of problems. Yeah. So we launched another new product. It's called a QDW Extract Tool. Okay. And uh, this tool can let you to install on the Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, okay. and so it can let you to mm -hmm. restore your file mm -hmm. in anywhere. Okay. And also, it provides the file preview functions. Mm -hmm. So before you want to select one of the file in one of the version to restore, you should okay. do the preview first. Yeah. And then after you check this one, this file is what you want, you can restore that. Okay. So it's the advantage from the preview. And also we provide the fine recovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the fine recovery, you can recover your data in file by file. Mm -hmm. You don't need to restore all the uh, backup data back and to select one of to use that. No, you just s select what uh, file you want and restore only that file. Okay. And for the QDDUP extract tool. Yes. So now I saw it that you can actually download it from the UI uh, of a HBS 3.0. Yes. So it's already there. So if someone is uh, thinking, where can I get this one? If Directly. you have a hybrid backup sync 3.0, they can directly download it there, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, and uh, here is the full scope for, uh, of the uh, QNAP QDDUP. Okay. So uh, after the backup data has been deduplicated by our HBA3, it can be restored directly from HBA3. And also you can deploy our uh, QDDUP entry tool on the cloud mm -hmm. to access the DDUP file from the cloud. And besides, uh, because we can install the DDB trick tool on every platform, Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. So it means in your desktop, in your PC, you can directly restore mm -hmm. uh, your backup data. Okay. okay. And other new feature is uh, TCP BBR. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the BBR is the congestion control technology provided by Google. And in has been supported in the Linux kernel 4.9 and what we said we have more more higher version of the Linux kernel yeah. 4.14 so last we can use the TCP VR and HBA3 and uh, what is the HB, uh, what is the TCP VR uh, is the congestion control algorithm mm -hmm. for enhance the, the transmission speed of the TCP protocol okay so you can see from the picture the TCP before BBR and uh, the vertical line is is the bandwidth. Yeah. And after the f the the network transmission facing a problem like the packet lost, okay. and the bandwidth will become more slower. Okay. okay. But with the TCP BR, mm -hmm. the bandwidth bandwidth utilization can achieve the full. Yeah. Okay. So the full bandwidth. Yeah, full bandwidth. All right. So. If we apply the TCBBR to our back backup test, you can see here is numbers. We back out the data from QNAP NAS in Taiwan mm -hmm. to AWS S3 in London zone. Yeah. And you can see without the TCBBR, the average speed is uh, near to 2 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. But with the TCBBR enabled, the speed can reach to 11 
Okay. And 10 is a 5%. Yeah. So you mean the four to five times increase if you just enable this option. Yeah, so we actually also tried it when you were here for Hybrid Backup Sync 3.0. When yes. we, we tried this real time. So if uh, the viewers are interested to confirm that this is actually true, we tried it here. And uh, Norman actually showed how to do it. Oh, you, you need, today we don't have demo. Yeah, 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 no, no. It's like I'm, I'm saying when you were here from oh, the previous video, yeah, yeah. you uh, actually had a demo. Yes. Yeah. So if the to people show. want to see the demo, they can go back and look okay, at a hybrid. Yes, yes, yes sure. because this works. <laughs> yes. And I need to mention a uh, this algorithm, this uh, option is uh, much suitable in web environment, not in LAN, because in LAN mm -hmm. you got better performance of the bandwidth. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and our uh, new feature of the HBS is that we complete integrate the file and object type cloud service and uh, already 22 public cloud services has mm -hmm. already supported. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of the cloud services is the policy synchronization and backup functions. And um, most important, that we support the multi version backup yeah. for all the cloud services. Okay, it's the full scope of our QNAP protection plan. You can back up your Mac, your Windows PC by Time Machine and NetBack Replicator. And after that, all the data on your NAS, you can use our HPA3 to do the filler mm -hmm. data protection plan. That you back up your data to the external device TRO4, BJBAB, or to a remote NAS. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are not, not satisfied, you could also back up the data from the local to the cloud. Okay. So it can help you to comply with the 3 to 1 mm -hmm. principle. Mm. Okay. And the, all of the data could be, all of the backup data could be deducted before it's sent out. Okay. And also, we provide the client side encryption, can make sure data mm -hmm. is very safe while mm -hmm. they're storing on the outside your NAS. Okay. Okay. Yes. And the, here's our recommendation models for a 2D because the 2D dupe consuming uh, a lot of the CPU loading. Mm -hmm. So it means you need a more powerful mm -hmm. model for supporting these features. Mm -hmm. So for different scale of the user, like personal mm -hmm. Soho to Samba Enterprise, we provide different kind of the model for them to choose to use. Okay. okay. Yeah. But all of this model app is encrypted with the uh, Intel CPU or you can use the MD models. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And also, we will suggest the user to encrypt your mo your NAS with the SSD. Okay. Both of the model has su supported to plug in the SSD, mm -hmm. and also you can use the R expansion card mm -hmm. like the QMD yeah. yeah. to increase the your storage space by SSD. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's my turn. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are already done. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. Shin. And today. We will introduce the iSCSI and Fiber Channel new interface in 4.4.1 beta. And today we will focus on the Fiber Channel because I think everyone is very familiar with iSCSI if you use yeah. the QNAP. Okay. Yeah. And here is the uh, Fiber Channel industry, uh, industry uh, speed about now most of the people using the 16 gigabyte Fiber Channel card now, but they are going to 30 to uh, gigabyte fiber channel card in these two years. Mm. We expect that people will adopt the 32 gigabyte adapter in, okay. in, in the recent. Okay. Okay. And the fiber channel adapt industry most common in banking and uh, online e-commerce because the fiber channel solution is very uh, safe and trust. So like the banking, they need a low latency, they need high security, and like the uh, e-commerce, they need data tra uh, database transaction. They need, uh, their data is very sensitive. So oh that's yeah. why they adopt the fiber channel mm -hmm. solution for their backup, uh, for their uh, uh, storage, s storage space. Storage space. Yeah. All right. OK, here's the iSCSI channel user scenario. In the normal, uh, people will s can see the uh, production server can access the uh, send storage by the fiber channel okay. and the backup server can access by the fiber channel as well and QNAP NAS will be here. QNAS can 
lot can access the fiber channel uh, can access the lung by the fiber channel okay. and back up the data they need to the QTAM NAS and then our NAS can share the data to other server by the mm. LAN so mm. we don't have we don't we don't need to use fiber channel in uh, in one time we can use the fiber channel and then in the same time oh, okay. and then we can share the data we back up to another QTAM NAS by the solution that uh, Norman provide mm -hmm. backup solution and as well as the snapshot. So uh -huh. in here, QNAM NAS can provide the fiber channel and the LAN in the same time. Mm. Okay. And then here is the fiber channel management that we provide in our uh, interface. We support all the function like the uh, uh, fi fiber channel target, lung masking, uh, for breeding, and multipath. The all of the fiber channel uh, feature we, we will support. Here is the architecture of the fiber channel. Uh, by the iSCSI, you just do the comparison here. By the iSCSI, you, you have to go to the internet and go to the IP and TCP layer, and, okay. and at the end, you can access your data. But if you do the H, uh, fiber channel, you just put the HBA card, and then you can go to the fiber channel protocol, and you can access the, uh, your data. So what's the difference is here is the CPU loading will be different. Okay. And here is the common connection uh, scenario in most of uh, production sites. Here is the first scenario is the your server can connect to your NAS by the fiber channel directly. But if you what if you have a uh, several server, you can connect to the uh, fiber channel switch first and then go to the uh, NAS. Here's the comparison with the fiber channel in NASCASI loading is a bit different. Here we can see the fiber channel. We use the quite the same uh, throughput of all the fiber channel in NASCASI. You can see the uh, CPU loading is quite di is quite different. You can see the fiber channel CPU loading will be lower than NASCASI, which is the test environment we in our QNAP lab. Oh, okay. Okay. And sorry. Okay, and then it's an adapter with support in 4.4.1. You can uh, buy the Marvel or Auto just on the Amazon and anywhere you want to buy. And just plug in or not, we support. <laughs> we have compatible with yeah, 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 them. You just fly and plug in. Mm. It's very uh, uh, convenient for the user. Okay. And well. QNAP will launch uh. our uh, our own fiber channel okay. car in July. But the car only support QTAM NAS. Okay. You cannot put on the other brand or put on the uh, Windows server, you can't. Okay, so it's customized for the QNAP NAS yes. only. Alright. Okay. Yeah. And our we will sell the uh, fiber channel transceiver as well in July. So it's together. Okay, so in July they are both coming out. Yeah. The transceiver and, and the card. And the card. Yeah. Okay, remember this. Remember <laughs> this. <laughs> Alright. And here is the recommend model for the fiber channel solution. Because the fiber channel user will need a large, very large space. So we, we recommend a, a, a large space uh, type of model to okay. our customer. That like here with entry levels, uh, SMB and enterprise, we re recommend different uh, type of model mm -hmm. to our users. All the compatible uh, model will list on our website. So if the user want to uh, select the type they want, they just go on our website and they select the model they want. Okay, there are plenty of models there. Yes. And then we introduced the SDD feature in here. Yep. So let me introduce why is the uh, SDD. SDD is a self-encrypt job that mm -hmm. included in the, your hardy, your SDD. So it's go with your uh, drive. Okay. So if your drive is goes stolen, it's you, you don't have to worry because it will be locked. No. But remember your Password have to remember, like me, I forget once. Yeah, <laughs> <really? So laughs> all the data in. So you can just erase the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So but you just deleted everything and yeah. lost it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just remember the <laughs> yeah, password. Yeah. Remember it's a very important <laughs> remember it. <laughs> and in 4.4.1, we uh, cooperated with the Samsung SD files. So, mm -hmm. so I uh, wait. Uh, we, we can guarantee the performance and security with the uh, Samsung SSD. Mm -hmm. And here's the encryption uh, math already in QTS. 
where you can encrypt your uh, violin and your shared folder by software encryption already I would provide before. But the CPU loading will be different because there is a uh, software encrypt. Somewhere. Yeah, it's software encrypt. So the load, uh, CPU loading will be different. We will show you the report later. And how to do the security, uh, how to do this SCD uh, security pool. It seems like. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You should put in the first time you put in the SCD, yeah. Samsung SD to your NAS. And okay. then the step is the same, like okay. mentioned, like Good. normal mention. And remember you have to click enable S C D. That's why you need to uh, uh, take care. Okay. And then you enter your password and let's finish. Mm. Okay. And here's a comparison with your CPU usage by the software and hardware encryption. You can see here the sequential rate uh, CPU usage will be different. You can find the hardware encryption. If you do the hardware encryption, your CPU loading will be like the half, almost the half. Okay. And the performance for the hardware encryption. If you do, yeah, it will be yeah. the same. You like the same, you always do the same, yeah. So okay. if you do the hardware encryption and without encryption, the uh, sequential rewrite <coughs> will be like, it will the same. Mm -hmm. So you can guarantee your safe, safety, security, and your performance in the same time by uh, Samsung SD. Okay. okay. And the, the last topic we I want to share with you is the Q tier. I think Q tier is uh, kind of user very familiar with the Q tier introduction, but I give the brief introduction here. Right. Before you do you do the Q tier, your data will divide to the hard data, warm data, full data, which is hard data is the data you uh, access a lot, right. and the cold data is the data you let you sell them to reach. It's mostly if you store them. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So if when you do the Q tier, you, we will help you to uh, tiering your data it depends on the your access frequency. Okay. So the hard data will be the first layer, which is storing SSD. The cold data will be the hardy layer, which okay. is storing hardy uh, layer. So, but we he heard of uh, our customer uh, <coughs> feedback about Qtier cannot remove the SSD layer. So oh. in 4.4.1, we release the We can do that. Yeah, we can okay. do that. Yeah, because the uh, our customer enter like the enterprise lay like going bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So their uh, demand to uh, demand for the storage is mm. bigger. So uh, uh, we need we provide a service for them that can uh, make the storage space more larger. Okay. Okay. So you can remove the SAD tier now. Very simple. Just click the remove button and we, we will do the same. There's a three step, three step we need to take care. <coughs> you user only need to click remove. Okay. Okay. And we will take care uh, about your when you do the remove we will take care about we will, we will we will take care about your storage is enough to uh, uh, move to SD tier to another tier like the we will move to the hardy tier. Right. We will guarantee your data will not be lost. Is there any risk? No, my data no, no, no. Before mm. you get, uh, if you, uh, if you like it, like yeah, power. apply the power. Yeah. We will, we will keep your data in oh, SD layer. Cool. Oh, okay. We will guarantee the data, all the data, mm. move to la next layer. We will, we, uh, we, we will start to remove the layer. Okay. So we will guarantee your data. Okay. okay. That's very safe. Yeah, that's why we said. Okay. I think that's the other topic I want to so share. So we'll reach the end for for your part. Yeah. Okay. We still have right? a lot of topics. Yeah, we have a lot of yeah, topics, yeah. but for your part, because as I said, there are three yeah. major parts yes. here that yeah. we are talking. Yes. So this was the storage and, and backup. backup. Yeah. Yeah. So now we might take a break, short break, okay. and come back for the second topic, okay. uh, which is going to be VJBot Cloud Thank you. and Cash Flow. Okay. Thank you, thank you for being here, You're thank you for being with us. Yeah. See you, you. In, in a while.
Okay. All right, so we are back again for, with the QTS 4.4.1, the beta version, not to forget. And I have Ripple here now with me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so as I mentioned, we are going to talk about the hybrid uh, cloud. Yes. So the VJ Bot cloud and the cache mount solutions that yes. we have. And that's why we have Ripple here to teach us more and explain yeah. us more on that. <laughs> OK, sure, thank you. All right. Okay, usually I discuss about the uh, local storage function, but yeah. right now for both Catchman and Visible it's a bit set for uh, as a local storage provider to move into this cloud storage era, mm -hmm. because we believe that even as a local storage provider, we can provide our NAS with a lot of benefit to users that are using cloud storage device. Okay. So let's just check out our new feature that will be available in. La catch mount, the basic function is already available in 4.4.1 beta and feature bar cloud will come out soon and along with the official feature bar, along with the official 4.4.1 release. Yeah, okay. okay, let's check um first of all the catch mount functions. Okay, completely upgrading the remote service. Mm -hmm. Okay. So of course in the uh in previous live streaming, we will know that in 4.4.1 the remote mount and connect to cloud drive will be combined to a single application which yeah. is a uh, cache mount and it's already available in our uh, 4.4.1 beta now when you set upgrade into the 4.4.1 the uh, cache mount will be installed automatically yeah. and what is the uh, advantage that like right now already available in the cache mount we can check that first, it supports up to 18 cloud storage provider. Before okay. the remote to uh, remote mounts and connect to cloud drive, it only support the file levels cloud yeah. storage provider. Yeah. For example, the Dropbox, for example, the Google Cloud Storage. But right now we also including the object storage provider, for example, the AWS, Amazon S3, mm -hmm. and Google object storage. Load storage provider uh, is not is usually used for business users that have more application and more like uploading applications data to the cloud. For example, uh, uh, Media Studio he may upload post editing material mm -hmm. back to the cloud for uh, to store the material that, that need to be archived. And we believe that we this connect to object storage. It can help user to utilize the NAS even more because before like, the remote mount only mount the home uses basis, the Dropbox mm -hmm. or Google Cloud Storage, Google Google Drive, and they have a limited capacity. And when we exist that capacity, it may charge a lot. And for the object storage, the price is more attractive for business user because when you can upload a lot of files, but you only charge a little. Yeah. Yes, yes. So one of the advantages is that we support object storage provider. And secondly, we have renewed the uh, uh, this uh, remote mount uh, solution into a more user friendly UI. Whenever you need to connect to the object cloud uh, storage location, it's more easy. You just select the object. So Start the cloud storage provider mm -hmm. and then login, uh, input the username and password. Mm -hmm. And finally, you have a single interface to control all of your uh, cloud uh, storage connection. Before that, we may see that in Fire Station, uh, you need to create the connection one by one, and you may not know uh, which, which, uh, which connection is yeah. created by which account, which uh, pro pro provide by which pro uh, cloud storage provider, mm -hmm. because it all. Uh, Locking the tree menu, but right now we have a uh, overall redesigned user interface for uh, along with some function. For example, the internet speed test will help user to better understand whatever uh, the remote mount speed is uh, limited by the local NAS or by uh, by the cloud storage or by the other factors. We can we have those improvement over this new cache mount app. Oh. Let's check one by one by detail. But before that, let me mention that. All the uh, exist function of the remote mount will still be available in the least new catch mount, which means that user can still using the catch mount to connect to a remote server that provides CIFS, SMB, FTP, or WebDAV protocols uh, service. They yeah. can, of course, connect to the other remote storage device okay. to create a remote connection. And next, the major improvement is that we provide more object storage provider. We can just see a logo here, Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Azure, and Google, uh, and Google Cloud Storage Space. And also, 
one red icon below <laughs> Huawei yeah. is also one of the vendor. We know that Huawei have recently have some news. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> but still, we are in a, a storage vendor. And yeah. whatever you use, which object st uh, storage provider, we can connect to it. Okay. So it's one of the benefit. Now, right now, beside from the basic file based storage solution, for example, the Dropbox, which may charge you a lot once you insist the yeah. capacity limitation. Right now, you can connect to object based storage that have allow you to have higher storage capacity. Um, actually, it is on demand storage, cap storage capacity. Mm, okay. If I, it will not have a limitation generally, unless you set the quota on the cloud. Okay, and okay. it will charge uh, based on how many files you have uploading and how many requests you have relating to uh, while retrieving those files. So, it's more suitable for business and application usage. Okay. And next, you can see that right now we have a new. Uh, new interface on this catch mount so you can create any cloud uh, connection or remote uh, service connection very easily you can see that in this wizard you just you just choose which cloud storage provider you want and then input the username password and then connection will be created and it can all be stored in this interface uh, you can easily see that which uh, which cloud storage provi provider you are currently to connect with, with which account and you can test their performance individually to oh. see that okay right now i have connected to different mo i may connect using multiple cloud both bar level and bar level yeah. and the uh, object storage and you can all see those connection in this interface okay. so this is the ui of the cache mount this is how yes. it looks like actually. yes okay so finally right now uh, even all the uh, uh, connection has been integrated into the cache mount but still mm -hmm. user can use in the file station to see all of the connection you can see oh, that okay. we can right now in file station you have a local NAS, USB, Blu-ray DVD, um, specific model yeah. and SD card remote NAS and cloud storage of course which is uh, today's topic we were talking about so this cache mount right now is already available in 4.4.1 for a beta user to try this new interface and to summarize and connect to the object cloud storage provider that is now be supported. Okay. okay. And next, uh, it's still not available in this beta one, but it should be available in so. the official release. Uh, but we are still testing this. Okay. This is a more advanced function called feature bar cloud. And why it's more advanced? Because uh, of course, uh, we also mentioned about importing a new technology is that we want to let RNA be a local uh, storage gateway via oh, local NAS okay. device. You can see that we can use Feature Cloud to connect to cloud object storage, but not only connecting to the cloud, but also create a cloud button. Mm. And when, it, when we write anything or read anything from this cloud button, it will go through this local cache space. Okay. So this help a user to have a higher performance while using this cloud storage space, while using this cloud button. And of course, utilize our NAS advantage in our storage professional uh, technologies. Okay. We can use it not just for SSD, for HD, DD, and even SSD cache and Q-tier, auto-tier solution mm -hmm. on this cache space. So user can customize their cache space to reach the de desired performance desired computation and accelerating the cloud storage performance okay okay this visible cloud we are uh, targeting at all x83 86 and on this 64 bit models that will be uh supported feasible cloud okay of course uh this feasible cloud we are aiming to supporting the business use users cases so we are targeting at 10 object storage provider which we also have a list here okay. and user can monitor all those cloud balance in one QTS storage management interface so so not you can not only uh, connect to a, a object storage space you can also create a cloud volume using our interface and decide the volume quota so that user will not allow too many data and let the cloud charge you too much okay, okay. So here, let's check on the uh, the scenario that we can use with Visible Cloud. First, of course, it allow you to expand your NAS capacity on demand. For example, right now I have a NAS. I want to create a new VM with VM disk on the NAS, but the storage space is already full. Mm -hmm. Well, I not I'm not sure how many space is required for this virtual machine. I am not sure whether I should purchase a new disk or a new uh, JVA to expand the NAS capacity. At this time, I can use this cloud volume to create on-demand storage space while I allocating the quota for the 
uh, for this cloud file actually uh, is charging based on how many that you have uploaded into the cloud okay. after the cloud file is created. So you can just uh, here I mentioned that you can just uh, with some simple create you can quickly create 515 terabyte of uh, storage space just like we see in the Avenger movie <laughs> 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 snap. Yes, with a snap you can create quickly create a very large storage volume. And this is especially uh, we are talking at the customer that required to expand storage space on demand mm. and also the basis IT uh, manager that want to have uh, multiple file server in different branch office. Before they need to purchase a lot of big base NAS, yeah. but right now they can purchase a small base NAS while using this cloud volume and using a local NAS as a gateway to accelerating the performance. Okay. And second and most importantly, we have uh, we are right now developing this feature cloud feature because we want to user can allow them to migrate the applications data from the local storage to the cloud easily. Right now we already received a lot of, uh, some of the user mentioning okay I, I have a local for example backup application mm -hmm. and backup to the NAS but the NAS space in right now I also want to backup to the cloud but at the same time I want to have the backup software cannot accept the cloud's uh, object storage, the protocol like object storage provided directly. Okay. So they are right now they may not not actually able to use the backup for example or archive software to backup the data to the cloud. But right now with this feasible cloud because I mentioned that the cloud bar volume created on the NAS will, the usage will be totally the same as a local volume. So all the protocol same bar and the free FTP, RTR, like HBS3 as using can all be use with this cloud volume. So user can publicly list the migrate the application data from local volume to mm -hmm. the cloud volume using this feature of a cloud. And of course when that one NAS is down, we can use the another NAS to connect to the same cloud volume. Wow. So this utilizes the cloud storage space high protections uh, advantage. And finally, uh, of course we this cloud space we can imagine that the user that already use cloud storage, they can using just purchase small bay NAS and put it on the local to accelerate the cloud storage performance. Because right now, for example, in uh, Taiwan's China Telecom, we see that even for a seventy five megabyte right, it will is already the highest mm -hmm. highest level of internet speed that like it can provide for general SMB users. Well, we list, uh, for example, X32 with uh, some in that SID, I can, al I can already reach around 500 megabyte wow. writing speeds for your local users. Uh, so the local users, they will, well, with this feature of cloud, they will have a using experience. Mm -hmm. While they're accessing the cloud storage, they will have a user experience sent to the local storage. Wow. And this is especially uh, useful when users need to, for example, back up multiple devices mm -hmm. uh, back to the cloud. They can back up to the NAS first to accelerate the performance while the local PC can be free from the backup test and do the other stuff. So NAS, the NAS does everything in the background? Yes. Okay. yes. And so this is not just for the user's experience, but mm -hmm. also allow your application to my to put upload your data to the cloud smoothly without any uh, latency issue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here is the advantage uh, again about this uh, feasible cloud. Of course, we know we know that when we connect and upload data to the traditional uh, Dropbox or uh, uh, or Google like Cloud Storage. Those uh, files will be as accessible on the cloud, of okay. course. But it will, when we modify the file, the file need to be uploading again, yes. all over again. Yes. While we list broad levels uh, feasible cloud, when, uh, when some part of the file has been modified, we only need to re-upload the modified part okay. because with the broad level solution, the f a single big file will actually be separated yes. several one megabyte of small file. So we know that lost blue dot here, the feasible cloud especially uh, have the advantage when you need to upload in your, for example, media product, VN desk, or mm -hmm. single DB. Those are one single but very big file, and it may require continue modifying special part of that file. Those those application, those files are especially uh, suitable for using along with feasible cloud. Mm -hmm. And of course, for the log files that have many one k one K B of file, yeah. they can also use utilize the feasible cloud solution because with a file level solution, they may need to upload a lot of one K B of file to yeah. the cloud. But with the broad level, they just need to upload one 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 megabyte of uh, file, and it reduce 
the real right access oh, okay. you need you use when uh, connected to the object storage and of course help you to saving some costs. Okay, so this is a solution not only for large data, yes. but also for smaller data also. Yes, for uh, those very small data. Okay. And finally, we have a comparison between Visual Cloud and Storage Gateway, which is provided by Amazon. And I also want to announce again that the AWS uh, Storage Gateway is also available on our NAS. Okay. If advantage, of course, is provided by Amazon, so it's even more naive and support more uh, uh, cloud storage solution. And but right now, you only support the uh, Amazon, which is itself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And of, of course, our Visible Cloud support, as you can see in the previous slide, I support up to 10 object storage provider. And of course, uh, it also support our storage. One most importantly is that support our storage tiering function, mm -hmm. which our cast space can be using with SSD and HDD array in combined. Well, for the storage gateway, uh, Amazon is also very interesting in our product when they cooperate oh. with us also because of this storage tiering solution. Mm. So when we have, uh, when you are considered using the AWS storage gateway, you can also purchase our NAS using the hardware okay. because we have this tiering solution to allow you to have a higher capacity local cache to ensure that the cloud storage performance can be accelerated. So right now, uh, for using this storage tearing technology, the other vendors, however, the other NAS may not be may not be available for yeah. along with this storage tearing solution. But with our NAS and QBS support with this storage gateway, it can also be achieved with the AWS storage gateway in our QNA NAS system. So those are the major difference. And of course, the storage gateway also provide the file level and tab level. Mm -hmm. While for Visual Cloud right now, we are providing the block level with all the basic function all the basic protocol that like cloud volume can be can used and in the future we are looking forward to provide more protocol for example the long on um, ice guys and even fiber channel which we discussed earlier yeah yeah, yeah we are still divine not technically it is achievable but we are starting whatever it has the standard area okay. that you just want to use this <laughs> because for fiber channel you know people really want to have a very stable storage solution right, yeah. right? and still right now the internet connection we know sometimes IT managers are still afraid <laughs> that the internet well, connection can die at yeah, any time. Yeah. Well, so we are still studying it. But this is just a simple recap of uh, what we have already provided with Cashmount at 4.41 beta yeah. and what is coming up with the feature of cloud. Yes. So we reached the end of this part? Yes, we have reached the end of this part. Okay, so maybe we go for a break and then come back again with Ichun. And we had, uh, we had Ripple here. So let me go to the live. <laughs> All right. So we had Ripple here with us. We, 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 we talked about the hybrid cloud solutions with VJ Cloud and Cash Mount. So we'll take a break and come back with each one with the multimedia applications. Thank you. Thank you. Great.
to to these photos. Okay, okay. Uh, the voice, the sound was off, so well, sorry. <laughs> so should we <laughs> yeah, again? again? Maybe, maybe we should go back. Just okay. go, let, let, let's just go a few steps back. Okay. Uh, exactly. Sorry, uh, QMAG here. <laughs> okay, multimedia applications. Yeah, we have uh, QMAG, QMAG Core and Multimedia Console for QTS 4.4.1. And these three are our uh, main multimedia applications okay. in this version. And let's start with QMAG. Okay. QMAG is our new uh, photo uh, management application, okay. which is different from PhotoStation our previous uh, photo management application. So QMAG is going to replace the photo station? Uh, it will be, but not, not, uh, not at this moment. We plan to uh, replace photo station uh, before this, uh, th the end of this year. Ah, okay, yes. okay. So it will be another solution, the QMAG. Yes, that's right. But currently these are two independent applications. Okay, yes. okay. And QMAG is different from PhotoStation because it, uh, it embedded with AI recognition technology mm -hmm. so we can aut uh, automatically organize uh, our users photos in QNF NAS. Okay. Yeah. The reason why we built this new application because we found that uh, most of our users stuck in their photos in, uh, in our NAS but without doing anything. Yeah, that's just uh, wasting your time and storage. Okay. So we built uh, QMAG to bring your memory back to life. Without QMAG, uh, you have to uh, organize these photos in, uh, yourself. You have to create your own album. You have to um, um, organize them mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, in your photo station. But with QMAG. Uh, our AI technology can uh, organize these photos for you, uh, including uh, create, uh, creating people albums okay. for your family and friends or creating things open for your uh, different, uh, for your photo with different things, things or so subjects. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, first, the first feature is uh, use QMAG to make a personal album. Okay. So how before we explain how to make a, a personal album, uh, let's th uh, let's think about uh, what should we do yeah. for uh, a personal album. Like a wedding party, you can play a slideshow of your uh, uh, groom and bride's photos, or a farewell party, mm -hmm. or a birthday. You might need a, a gift that is printed from a personal album. Okay. So without QMAG, you have to find the photo one by one. You have to see all the photo and pick uh, uh, photos with the person you love. Mm -hmm. And but with QMAG, uh, we have facial recognition, so it would automatically collect uh, all photos with the same person in one person. Uh, one people album. Okay. Yeah, so you don't need to f uh, find the photo one by one. Yeah. So that's uh, how our uh, people album looks like. Yeah. So we can collect photos from uh, uh, using the facial recognition and we have intuitive mer uh, merge flow so you can merge different appearance mm. and the same person into one people album okay and so you yeah this would recognize the person from different angles right yes okay yes and you can also um, edit the uh, people album so if uh, there's a face that is not correct okay yes you can also uh, just move it out from the people album yeah. mm, okay so the second one is uh, use um, QMAG to make a thin album uh, you know, Harry Potter. There's a um, sorting hat. Yeah. yeah. The the um, thing album is just like that. Yeah, it can classify your photos into different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's because that uh, some of our users, including me, uh, we uh, I would take a lot of photos when 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 I take a trip. Okay. And when I come back home, I would like to uh, find all photos with buildings around the world or uh, sunset, okay. sunset or sea yeah but 
But without QMAJ, you have to uh, organize right after you come back home you know, yeah. and build a, an album. You have yeah. to do it manually. Everything. Yes, you have to do it manually. But uh, with QMAJ, you can ju just use our subject detection mm -hmm. and we will collect uh, photos with the, uh, the same objects or themes together. Mm -hmm. So they are, uh, currently there are 400 different themes that we can uh, classify. Mm -hmm. uh, including holidays or animals or food or sports yeah we get uh, lots of um, categories mm -hmm. for our users so you may be uh, wondering why QMAG is so smart okay. so I would like to introduce uh, our QMAG core which uh, it is the AI engine uh, for QMAG that's why it is so smart uh, QMAG core uh, embedded with uh, facial recognition and subject detection so uh, it can make QMAG smart and okay. we currently we support Intel, AMD and ARM64 uh, CPU models and we will suggest our user if you are still using ARM64 CPU models you need to upgrade your RAM to at least 4 gigabyte that would be much more smoother when you are running the recognition. Okay. Yeah. So how to start to use QMAG and QMAG Core? The first step is you buy have to buy a QNF NAS. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and you have to upgrade to QDS 4.4.1, which we just beta released yeah. a couple of days ago. And the second step is you have to install QMAG. And uh, while you are installing QMAG, we will automatically download and install QMAG Core okay. and Container Station because uh, we need Container Station to run QMAG Core. Okay. Yeah, and we need QMAG Core to make QMAG smart. Mm -hmm. So that would be all set when you download and installing uh, QMAG. QMAG. Yes. And the, third, uh, the last step is go to uh, Multimedia Console, which I will introduce the next section okay. yeah. and set the content source folders yeah. so after these three de steps you can see uh, your photos in QMAG so let's take a uh, take a look at multimedia console All right. multimedia console is our new application that uh, controls all our multimedia services on QTS so uh, if you want to browse your photos in QMAG, you have to set a content source folder. So what is content source folder? Before, uh, before QTS 4.4.1, we uh, received some questions from our users mm -hmm. or feedback from your users. That why can I um, see my photos in PhotoStation? Yeah, because you have to choose, you have to set the folder as a media folder or uh, set the photo folder property as fo uh, photo folder. Okay. Yeah. And after that, you can see your photo in PhotoStation. But uh, in QTS 4.4.1, it would be just easy. Um, you just you just need to go to Multimedia Console and set the content source in Multimedia Console. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can, and then you can see the folder uh, the photo in QMAG. Yeah, so how, this is how it looks like. And you just go to content management page and assign folder as content, manage, uh, on, as content source for uh, QMAG or PhotoStation. And then you can see all the, fo uh, all the photos in the applications. Okay. Yes. So how would it be if, uh, if you uh, upgrade from our previous QDS? Um, if your photo, uh, you, if your folder is, is uh, photo folder, okay. you, after upgrade to uh, QTS 4.4.1, you will automatically convert to a uh, content source folder for QMAG and mm -hmm. PhotoStation. Okay. Yeah, and if the video, uh, if the folder is for video, okay. you will convert to uh, content source for uh, video station that's really really easy to understand yeah so uh, before before upgrading uh, the folder folder property would be uh, for example is video okay. after the upgrade 
uh, it will be assigned as a common source for a video station. Okay. Yeah. So here's another new feature in multimedia console is called video to audio audio transcoding. It is it is designed for videos that could be heard, like uh, speeches, lectures, or tutorials, something oh, else. Okay. And it can after you convert them to audio files, it can reduce the file size, of course, and you can play it when uh, when you are driving or commuting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the uh, it is really uh, easy to find when you you can set uh, audio as the output format when setting background transcoding folders, mm -hmm. just like the red box uh, on, on our Sweet. screenshot. Yes, and then the transcoded audio would be saved in video to audio folder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will be really easy to use. Yeah, so that's all our highlights for multimedia applications on QTS 4.4.1, including uh, QMagi, our AI photo organizer, and QMagi Core, which makes uh, QMagi smarter, mm -hmm. and multimedia console, which can um, control all the multimedia services on QTS. Okay, thank you, thank you, Ichun. Thank you for uh, explaining to us all of these. So we reached the end. We, we, we kind of introduced the QTS 4.4.1, the beta version, and go out there, get your QNAP NAS, and then try yourself the QTS 4.4.1. So we talked today about this uh, new release that we have, and uh, we talked about the three major parts of the QTS 4.4.1 beta version, which is coming with the upgrade of the Linux kernel. We talked about the hybrid uh, cloud solutions, the backup and storage solutions, and the multimedia solutions that are coming and that are out now and you can try it yourself. So thank you everyone. Thank you. See you next time on QNAP Live Broadcast. Bye. Yeah.